Hey friends, welcome back. I am so excited that you're here because I'm gonna be showing you four parts from a real wedding day. This is behind the scenes footage of me shooting a real wedding, but I'm not gonna show you the pretty perfect, like awesome part of the day that was easy. I'm gonna show you the four trickiest parts of the day. And um, we're gonna make this work. I have a feeling we can squeeze you guys in, but if we have to go in the sun, I'll make it really fast because I know you guys are hot. That made me think on my feet, that challenged me, um, that left me feeling for a second like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Um, because I hope that by watching these things and learning from them, you're gonna be able to overcome those situations if they arise in your own shooting, when you're shooting your own weddings. So this wedding was for an amazing couple. Their names were Christian and Amanda. They're super sweet. It was in May, and so it was pretty hot, pretty humid, a little sticky outside. This was shot in Virginia at a private estate, um, and it's a beautiful venue, but it does present a few challenges, which I'll get into in a few minutes. But it was an awesome day. I had actually just had a baby three and a half weeks prior to shooting this wedding. So that's an inter interesting piece of information, but I was fine shooting the wedding. There were actually parts of this wedding day that were more challenging than the fact that I was three and a half weeks postpartum. Um, I would say that this wedding as a whole was one of our favorites from the entire wedding season. But a lot of times the weddings that are the most impactful to us are the weddings where we overcome huge obstacles and find really amazing solutions. So I'm excited for you to see this wedding day because not only is the couple gorgeous, um, the weather was amazing, but I think as awesome as those parts were, it makes the challenges of the day even more emphasized. Okay, so the first challenge of this whole day was the fact that the couple was getting married at a castle. Now, the venue does not call themselves a castle, but everyone who goes to this venue, sees pictures of this venue, drives past this venue, they call it a castle because it looks like a castle. It has a medieval vibe to it um, that is challenging. And it's actually more challenging than you would ever imagine because the brides that book there, they want this beautiful country estate feel. But that means for me as a photographer, I have got to find ways to avoid certain aspects of this venue. So I've got to hide a lot of dark areas. I've got to make sure the literal knight in shining armor is not in the background um, when they're coming down the steps at the reception. I've got to find ways to take this venue and curate it and avoid certain distractions to give my bride the curated aesthetic, this bright white clean aesthetic that she wants while I'm shooting in a very dark medieval themed place. So let's go take a look at a few clips. Hey there, welcome to Amanda and Christian's wedding day. We're literally at a castle, even though they don't like for you to say it's a castle. It's supposed to be a, what is it called? A country a, estate. A country estate, that's what it's called. But um, if you keep turning in, it looks like a castle. Um, so, but it's beautiful. Um, the challenge of the day, it's multiple locations, 240 guests, lots of guests. Um, and we know this sweet family from church, the bride's family. So um, there's just extra pressure because we are good friends with them and we love them and we know who they are in our own personal life. So we just want to do a really good job. So it's also really hot. And we had to leave our very sick toddler at home. She has hand, foot and mouth disease and it is horrible, covered in blisters. So, um, and we have a four week old baby. So just had quite a week. And hopefully this is the end of the craziness. So I'm glad you're going to join us. Do you think they'll mind if the back of our minivans in these portraits? Please turn to the left. <laughs> Can't even get in the place. <laughs> You're gonna have to change your settings because it is it is dark. Last um last weekend, the uh, officiant forgot to have Dad give the bride away, and he stood up there the entire ceremony. <laughs> it was so bad. Hi, hello. This is so good. Y'all are so cute. Oh, oh yeah, y'all are all in shape. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Okay, we're gonna go this way. 
This is a pretty room. Yeah, Amy, you've never been here. Yeah, I've, yeah just kidding. It's my favorite room. <laughs> um, so I'd love to take it to that other bedroom. Oh, yes. With... Uh-huh. Yep. That's probably where you guys will get dressed and ready. I think so. Because it looks, it looks more like a getting ready space than like a salon space. Exactly. So let me just explain to you guys a little something about this venue. Dover Hall used to be, it was actually built for a family, like a single family home to live there. I think it's like 24,000 square feet or something. It is insane. It is literally a castle. Um, but it is not as epic as it is, as, as cool as it is, it's actually not super easy to shoot in. Not just because, you know, there is a little bit of lack of light here and there, but because it's very harsh. It's very intense. I mean, look at that chandelier. It's got like pointed, jagged edges. Um, it's very hard to make this look bright and airy and match my style. So we Oof. actually just booked a bride uh, who's getting married here in 2020. Um, and we booked her and one of her requests, I talked to her on the phone and one of her requests was, I want to get married at Dover, but I don't want it to look medieval. I don't want it to look like a castle. Like I want it to be bright and airy. And I think that you can do that really well. And I told her, I said, the truth is, um, yes, I can do that. But the way that that actually happens is that I make a lot, and and I mean a lot, like probably hundreds of small decisions about what I'm going to shoot and what I'm going to avoid and what I'm going to hide um, when it comes to photographing the day, when it comes to blogging, when it comes to what I showcase on social media. I have to be very strategic um, in order to not make this a really dark and heavy wedding. And so that's something to pay attention to as I photograph the entire day. Um, pay, pay attention to the decisions I make, the things that I hide, the things that I focus on. Um, and I'll try to point those things out as we go so you can see what I mean and why I have to be so careful. Exactly what I did last time I shot here. But at the same time, I know what works. So I got to, oh, and I'm probably going to shoot with this. So we're going to move all this stuff over here as quickly as possible because I have a feeling oh dear I need a styling mat from the car I'm just gonna where am I gonna put this I might need to shoot the dress there well I don't want to get any anywhere too cluttered so I'm looking for um, the dress I want mm, hold on I'm being called yeah Yeah. No, we're oh. good. We just, Hi, girl. We just wanted to make sure we didn't. See okay. I don't even know how. To, I don't know how to open these doors. <laughs> I'm looking for. It needs to be an epic dress shot, but not too dark and heavy. So, like hanging it on this is not doing that. Hanging here would be pretty because the light's coming from that side. But um, this seems pretty ancient, so. <laughs> I don't know if I should use that. I mean, I can just, I can use the bed for now, but I need to move the comforter back because it looks really bulky and big. Wow. This bed, this bed is, look at the ceiling. It's like got its own built-in canopy. Yeah. Um, the other option is, oh, not that. It might hang from there. Maybe I could do that. Maybe. So my goal, the reason why I'm not thrilled with leaving it with the bed is because the bed still has kind of a dark, heavy, um, aspect to it. You know, the bed frame is really dark. I'd love to be able to hang it somewhere where it's all neutral and bright and all you see behind it is that really pretty gold pattern wallpaper um which when you think about it the wallpaper and the curtains like the the detail around the bed whatever you call that thing man may, couldn't they have changed up the pattern a little bit it's a lot i mean i'm have no experience decorating medieval castles so what do i know but um 
So I think I try, yeah, try hanging the dress on the chandelier. I think it scares me, but I get one vertical detail shot that worked well. It's very pretty. It's very classy. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, it's a little scary. But it's very pretty, and it's, it's bright enough. I can avoid that a little bit. And I'll shoot more from this angle so that light's coming in. It's barely tilting, though. I don't want this to look too... Hello? Oh, they slide. All right. I got this. Hi! Hi! I got Welcome. you, Matt. Thank you! How are you? Good. I am. Um, I'm going to have to shoot this with a 50, I think. There's just something about this. And, and I'm probably going to have to shoot it on the bed, too, because that's like the epic um, uh, overhaul dress shot, and I think she's expecting that, so... Anyway, um... So this is Ashley Harrington. If you have been a part of KJ All Access in the past, you know that we love working with the Harringtons. Um, if you are in the KJ um, business collection and you've been through um, our networking module, you know um, that we talk about the Harringtons and that we actually give our brides incentives to book them, um, financial incentives, because it's so great for us to work with them because they know how we work. Uh, and so anyway, it, it's just part of our networking process. And there's so much more that I could say about that. Anyway, Ash had their baby girl, their first baby. Um, let's see, a week after I did, um, I had our third baby a week prior. And so baby Graham and baby Cece are seven days apart. I photographed baby Cece being born um, seven days after having Graham, which is just crazy. Um, but it was wonderful. It was such an honor to be there. Um, but, uh, the reason why I'm talking so much right now is because while I'm shooting, we were talking about the birth process and I think it was a little bit inappropriate. So if you hear us just kind of joke about pumping or, you know, anything like that, we, we definitely are in the same season of life. Um, it's so nice to not be alone in that. Um, and if any of you mamas out there are like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to shoot. I'm pregnant. Well, this is us, three and four weeks postpartum. So, you know, sure, I don't quite look like myself. I don't um, necessarily have all my energy back, but I did feel great. And it was very possible um, to do this wedding and to do it well. So this kind of goes back to the example that I gave earlier about choosing things that fit the ultimate style goal. There are chairs, massive, somewhat impressive medieval style chairs everywhere. Um, but it doesn't mean that that's what we should choose just because things are impressive. Um, and, and maybe that's like the overall kind of mantra of shooting at Dover Hall is avoiding the epicness in order to shoot for the style that you ultimately want. And to everyone else, that is going to seem, um, like, like you're making the wrong choice to everyone else. You should shoot with the craziness behind you. Like that'll make a cool picture. Like make sure he gets ready underneath the tiger head. You're like, no, that's not what we want. And that's not what the bride wants. Um, but shooting right here is perfect because look at the wall behind him. Um, he has a neutral, uh, blank wall to the back of him. He's got natural light coming into the front of him. He has a spear behind his head. Hopefully we're going to crop that out. Um, some kind of medieval candelabra, but that's not, that's not too bad. Um, definitely want to avoid the orchid as well, but this is a much better situation than him sitting in a chair that looks, uh, throne-like underneath a tiger head next to a bear head next to an alligator hide. I think we're doing a much better job of capturing a classic wedding day by putting him in this exact location instead of keeping him in that room. If you guys want to get dressed, we might, I might have one of you or both of you help throw jackets on and just do some, yeah. some well, stage. Yeah, dressed, yeah. Sweet, yep. yeah. Perfect. Okay, do you want to do a sh Are you going to photograph him doing a shoot? I was going to. Okay, I just need really just your jacket and just like a few little sure. tiny up things, and then you can get the rest because I got to run back upstairs. Sure, sure, sure. So let's just do Do you want to do cufflinks? Oh, yeah, let's do cufflinks. They're right around by your shoes. Perfect. So I wanted to talk quickly about the idea of um, passive parts of the wedding day 
and proactive parts of the wedding day. So right now for Michael, this is a proactive part of the day. He could be passive and he could choose to kind of show up that way. Um, but being proactive is doing things like, let's find a better location. Let's point you towards the window. Let's instruct you to do certain things. Let's talk about certain elements that we want to capture and what we don't need to capture. Let's ask the planner for boutonnieres because you know that's something that we normally need. There are things that Michael knows need to be done, and there are things that um, Tyler knows that he needs, and this is not a part of the day that's passive for them. It, there are going to be many other parts of the day that are passive where they just simply capture what's happening. And I think a lot of photographers um, think that that's their job the entire day. Uh, and then they wonder why they don't get the shots that they want because you have to determine what's a passive moment and what's a proactive moment. And choosing to step into a proactive moment is actually um, a lot harder than capturing something passively. So um, there's so much more I could say about this. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, Michael did a great job of being proactive, getting what we needed, um, and putting the groom in a spot that was classic, that was clean, and was free of any medieval elements. And when she does this, you just look straight out. And I'm not going to step on the dress. Bringing it, lean back a little more. No, you stand up nice and straight so it looks nice and natural. Oh, man. Hold on, I gotta change the lens. Y'all can hold that for two seconds. And I'll have um, Ty when you're done. I'll get you to step back just for a second. Sorry. You're good. Oh, keep going. Yes, I love it. Sharon, step outside of her shadow a little bit. So there you go. And you can fluff the veil. I just want light on both of you. Oh, you got it. You got it. That's perfect. There you go. But you can My gosh. You guys are good. I'll tell you if you're in the picture. I promise. So you're going to actually chest can face that wall. Just like that. Yep. And you can turn your shoulders towards me. Maybe do a hand on the hip. Let's see what that looks like. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, Caitlin is happy. <gasps> so happy. Laughing. Actually, it's going to sound strange. But laughing right at my hand right okay. here. Okay. Maybe a little lower. There you go. And smiling right at me here. I know, I know, it's such a strange thing. You may be wondering why I'm holding the veil up because that's obviously not outside, like the wind's not blowing it. Um, I'm doing that just because there are a lot of heavy parts to the back of the room, like that black hole of the fireplace, the really dark framed portrait, there's another dark door frame. Um, and by holding that up, I'm making it look a little brighter and airier and more of my style by just creating a softer foreground. So that's why I'm doing these portraits the way I'm doing them. And um, I wanted to explain that because I feel like if you don't have a purpose or a reason, sometimes it can be just like a weird thing that I'm trying, trying to be artsy. Um, outside it makes sense because the wind could have been blowing it. Um, I wish I had scooted her one foot forward because that dark area to the left, I also wish I had moved that light, that light, gosh, it's, it's not good. There's no need. I could have unplugged it and moved it, I believe. So sometimes lamps in hotels, at least, are kind of like bolted to the wall so no one can move them. Same with picture frames, but I, I'm pretty sure I could have moved that, which is unfortunate. Gorgeous. So another tricky part of this day was that the bride told me, she said, Caitlin, I really want to do a first look in front of the venue, in the driveway, with the whole venue behind us. And I told her, I totally get that. But that's going to be really hard because your first look is going to be in the middle of the day in May in the summer heat. The sun is going to be so bright. I told her, though, I'm like, we will do everything po humanly possible to make this happen, but it's risky. So when I was setting up this first look, there was so much going through my mind. First, I'm trying to pay attention to the exact angle of the sun, how they're going to turn towards each other, where I can shoot to not have lines of light on their face. And I'm telling you, this was the trickiest first look I have ever photographed, but also one of the most successful. I was so proud of myself because somehow we made, we pulled off this first look in the middle of harsh light in the middle of a really hot summer day wedding. And it was it was fine, but it took a lot of planning and a lot of strategic um, implementation of lighting knowledge that I've gathered over years and years of my career. And so by taking all this knowledge and paying attention to very key details, I was able to line up everyone perfectly. Um, the videographer and I, which is actually Tyler, uh, we lined up perfectly as well. So the way that we were shooting made everything work. We got the shots we needed and our bride got her dream of having her first look in front of the venue. So I'm gonna take you to this clip. I want you to pay attention to all the little things we were paying attention to in order to make our bride's dream a reality. I didn't want to 
want to turn around. I know, I know. <laughs> You're following yeah, instructions yeah, we so are. well. Okay, I'm going to come out here and take a look. I think she, I think she wants the big look. Right. So that's um, why I, said, I thought out here might work because I think the you stone can get more is reflective. Of, like, the grandness of it, but it's it's still reflecting. It's not as bright as that. Yes. That's fine. Yep. Why could we do it just like right here? Yes. Hey, sorry, yes. Hold on. Let me let me give this a shot. I. Uh, Okay. I think we could do it here. Okay. And, and I so think if it's. If they face their shadows. I think it's just be. Lighting and location course. Too. Yes. So they just need to know. They they got to be all, looking this this way always. Like we cannot turn them around. Okay. Right. Well, we will, like at least we can't. Turn. We, we can't yes. move from this side. I think that's good. So let's pull him out to where Ash. Christian, you can come to where Ash is. Yeah. So once you get him positioned, then I'll set this camera up. This is my wide camera. Yep. And then give him a second to get the other camera set up. And then we'll do we'll do the whole thing through the first time. They're gonna read those notes. Yeah. Um, and then okay. I'm gonna have her do one reenactment with the gimbal for her. Okay. And then you can go to portraits. Does that work? Yes. Perfect. You might have to repeat some of that. Sorry, I'm. So you can come all the way out to me, and that way we can see all of Dover, and it's grander. Right, right about. I know. I know. Right here is perfect. Um, this might not be as reflective as that, and I'm thinking if we go this way, the sun is more that way than it is straight. So let's put them, Christian. Let's put your feet right here. Yeah. The goal is for you to be able to see your shadow, which you can. That's wonderful. So, have, how much have you told him? Uh, pretty much everything. Kind of everything? Yeah. Perfect. Don't go towards her. So you're gonna stand you just stand. Yes. Stand so stand we. Why don't you go get her? Okay. And Michael, bring her to right about here, or like right here. Is he gonna angle? And I'm gonna have her walk, and he look like this. Perfect. And that is that okay? Sure. I was going to have her come walk here. Okay. He can actually just maybe close his eyes. And then kind of turn. And then, then the first look is like all parallel with Dover. Okay. We're making dreams okay. happen, do people. To turn or do you, want me to... you, could, you could turn to her. You just don't want to face the building. Don't face Because then, I'm get this yeah. golf cart and you're doing great. I know it's hot. Really quick, I want you to hear what I'm saying, but this is hard. This is really hard. If you're a photographer and you've been a photographer for any length of time, you know that this is not ideal, shooting in harsh light, doing a first look in harsh light. But this is what the bride really wanted, um, and there is a way to try to make it possible. He needs to face his, his shadow at all times. That is how we guarantee that he doesn't have that awful light on his face. And the reason why Dover won't be super overexposed is because it's kind of dark in the background and there is actually extra secondary light being pushed up on the front of their faces from that white stone. Do I have a shadow here? No. no. It's your own shadow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you think, Ty, we should angle just a little bit like this? Yeah. But you also have bangs on your face. I would angle him towards his toes. That's the reason why I thought towards his from that way. Because that way he's but he's going to turn towards the light. So this is actually really important. What I'm doing is I'm thinking in advance that the line, the parallel line from which we're lining ourselves up with them needs to change or else when he turns and she looks at him, she's going to have harsh lines of light on her face. And the way that I just angled him is going to protect both of them from that. So it's kind of, um, you know, me acting it out that's really helping me see what the reality is going to be once she's actually in position. This. I'm going to come to where you are. Oh, okay, yep. You're going to come right. Do what? His eyes are closed. His eyes are closed. <laughs> Guys, I got to tell you, this is a very stressful first look for me. Um, but also I'm kind of excited because I know that my technical knowledge of photography and how to make it work is coming into play and I'm making my bride happy, but I'm also creating beautiful portraits that would not be what anyone would choose because it is super bright and it is hard to control. Like you can see brightness on her chest a little bit. Um, so 
we're just going to have to be a little extra strict with kind of their rules. Like he cannot walk to her and like have, you know, pick her up and twirl her around. Like they just need to kind of stay in position. It's just so the light won't be too hard. Okay. Okay. And I turn face towards this way. Yeah. You and the thing is you need to just enjoy this. Okay. So don't worry too okay. much about light. We'll make it work. Okay. this veil. Do you want it on both shoulders if you can? So let's tuck it in your armpit. Okay, find the corner. So that will keep it there somewhat. Okay. If it flies, it's still beautiful. And let me do this side. Okay, armpit. Okay, once you get to it, you can let it fly. Okay, give me one second. One second. You good, Ty? All right, Amanda, whenever you're ready. I don't know about you, but I was watching this and I was nervous and I was there. I know what happens. Um, it's, oh, it's nerve wracking shooting in light like this, but it worked. It was great. It was beautiful. Even Michael from that other angle worked out fine. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from this for, for you guys is to pay attention to how I corrected and adjusted my angles constantly. Um, the angle at which I'm shooting them, that is, that matters more than anything because like that's Michael's angle. Um, that's my angle. See how there's no harsh light on their faces or his chest or her right side. Uh, that is because of where I'm standing. If I was a little bit to the left, she would have a line of light dividing the front of her body and her face. If I, if I was a little bit more, um, to the right, he would have that problem. So it's up to me to notice those things and to stay in position where I am. That's really important. <laughs> they love you. <laughs> oh, it's your mom. It's your mom. Are you talking? <laughs> Come in a little closer. Come in a little closer. Okay, I saw a light. Your mess real quick. Okay. I first saw you and Barrett Hall at reception. You hear something special. You walked into that dorm room. Right from the dress. Wait. Oh, no. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Take two. Take two. I'll help you. Here, I'll do it for you. I'll restart. <laughs> oh, that's better. Okay. Right. And... So our relationship developed. The walls came down. Thankfully, they did. Because it made me fall more in love with you. Show me you're a woman of integrity, conviction, beauty, grace, strength, kindness, and selflessness. Our relationship began to develop deeper. You are truly my better half. Sit with me in the highest hills of the most valley. That. I cannot thank you enough. I hope to give you as much as you have given me. Thank you for your best for Outside of Jesus, I've never felt more known. Thank you for being the one who gets me beyond all of these things. You truly know my soul inside and out. When I look at you, I feel joy in my future and know that I can help. I vow to make you laugh and treat you with that most respect and honor you always. I was right to know it could affirm my love for you indefinitely. I vow to always remember this day as a joyous celebration of my love and carry this memory into the life I have. Mm -hmm. 
So the third trickiest part of this wedding day was the fact that we got a little behind schedule. We needed to get bridal party portraits done before we drove like 20 minutes to the church. And so the bridal party also, this venue is beautiful, but there's no shade. There's like no shade except for two feet of shade in front of one window in the front of the, um, in the front of the venue. So there's like this really pretty window with Ivy and it's gorgeous, but this is a massive bridal party. And I knew like this, this wedding was going to be just epic. So every part of it needed to be epic. So I needed these bridal party shots to be gorgeous, but I had to find a way to fit all these people in like two to three feet of shade. And so you're going to watch me do that in this next clip. Do you want to come in here? No? Okay. Well, I don't want to make anything too loose. So Ash has a, Ash is very prepared. So we're going to use one of her bobby pins. Oh my gosh. Did you see? Oh. We do what? We were yeah, well, we she likes this side, so we'll put all the girls yeah. over here. So, so we're gonna line up, I'm going to fix your like hair. Will at the front of the church. You are the best. So on the right side. I used to have a kit like this. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that. <laughs> I don't know where it went. You know, I used to wear them on my yeah, shorts. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if we're all going to fit. Okay. It's gonna be tight. Wow. Well, I don't we'll, wanna shove you in the bushes. Well, we can pull them out. Um, it just will be hotter. Guys, it's not that it almost done. I know, this okay, breeze, this breeze yeah, in the shade. shade. This has to happen, y'all. <laughs> okay, all right. Guys, I'm Kaylin, nice to meet you. you. I go with him and um, we're gonna make this work. I have a feeling we can squeeze you guys in, but if we have to go in the sun, I'll make it really fast because I know you guys are hot. Okay, so girls, if you are, if you're boobs to back, how close can you get? Oh, I got no boobs. I got no boobs. <laughs> hey, I can get right up. So what we can do is we can angle and not shoot straight on. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be a bus, but okay. Okay. You guys are going to come. You guys here are going to come forward. We're going to be kind of like in line with this, okay? So y'all are perfect right there. Not too far out. There you go. Y'all can come to me. You got it. Perfect. Okay. So we're changing the angle to be more like this, Michael, okay? So on back. So this kind of goes against everything within me because I love the architecture of the building and the curve of that window. Um, so I always like shooting straight on, but that's just not possible and keep them, keeping them out of the harsh sunlight where it's super hot. Um, so I just changed the angle a little bit and because of those bushes, um, it's actually fine. You know, I just, it's a good tweak. Maybe this tweak will help you fit a bridal party um, in a location. It's a simple angle change. Um, and it's just taking on a different, taking on a different view than I originally thought. Um, so I'll let you listen in. Your forearm can be right wherever your hip bone is, okay? Christian, you can put your right hand in your pocket, okay? All right, so guys, let's see. We need to get y'all, sorry, a little closer to get him out of the sunlight. You got it, you got it. Perfect. Yes, there you go. Now, if you want to have a little more space, everyone can back up another like five inches. Okay. All right. Guys, you ready? Here we go. So there are a lot of things happening. There's lots of cameras. Okay. He's a camera. There are cameras. Lots of things are going on. You only need to look at me. Okay. You don't want to be that one person looking at the wrong camera. Like the album will say that forever. We don't want that. All right. Take a step back. There you go. Perfect. Yes, yes, I know it's really bright, so you can close your eyes and I'll count you down, okay? So close your eyes for me, one, two, and look at me and smile. Beautiful, you can close them again. We'll take one more, guys, this is beautiful. Take one more like this and then we're gonna intermingle guy, girl, guy, girl, okay? So let's close your eyes one more time and open them, smiling at me. You can close them again, sorry, I need a vertical of this. And open one, two, and three. Gorgeous, so we're gonna intermingle guys, girls, so we need probably three girls on this side and three three guys on this side. And we're going to intersperse you. You made the cut? We're going to space yeah. you guys out. Oh. You'll notice that I am shooting details while Michael is rearranging everybody. So Michael was telling everybody where to go and I was doing some detail shots quickly because, you know, the limo has already shown up. It's to the left of us um, from where my sister's filming right now. Um, 
And I just know, you know, we're kind of a little bit pinched and tight on time. So I wanted to do this quickly. I want to get them out of the heat. Uh, I want to be the fun photographer that also gets stuff done and is, and is efficient. Um, so those detail shots in between kind of the transition of moving people is important. And I also approach bridal party as, hey, let's get the groomsmen, bridesmaids on single sides. Like, let's get that done first. And then the majority of the work that I really love, the, the images that I really love from bridal party are when they're intermingled like this. I think that's best. Guys, we're making up time like crazy. This is good. Okay, guys, we, girl, your color choices. Okay, I know this is very random, but the, the sky reflecting in that window is exactly the same color as your bridesmaids dresses. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, so y'all are getting a little closer, so she's out of the sun. So I don't know if y'all know each other, but you're about to. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, they're okay. They're okay. So get a little, I know, a little, you got it, girl. You got it. No, you're out of the sun. What are the guys are doing hands in the pocket. I don't know if I've ever had that great of a reaction from telling you that. Ooh, hands in the pocket. Wow. Okay. All right. Guys, we're not animals. All right, here we go, guys. A couple, let's have a groomsmen on the end here a little closer. Yeah, there you go. Smiling. Smiling here. We're almost done with group photos. Can you believe it? Smiling here. One, two, and three. Gorgeous. I know it's bright. You can close your eyes again. Okay. We're going to open them in two seconds. One, two, three. Smiling here at me. Gorgeous. And instead of just smiling, let me make sure I can see a little bit of Sarah. There you go. Yeah, I don't want to get you tucked too far, but you're important. There you go. There, yeah, there you go. Perfect. I just want to be able to see. And let's um, let's maybe back a little bit away from Christian so he can turn his shoulders out towards me. There you go. Sorry. You got it. Let me make sure I can see everybody. We're good. So everyone smile at me one more time. One, two, and three. Beautiful. Now, you're going to close your eyes. When you open them, instead of smiling, you're laughing at me. And there is a big difference. Amanda is the queen of this. All right? So close your eyes for me. Here we go. Close your eyes. One, two, three. You're laughing at me. Guys. You may be the best bridal party that's ever done that. There's a lot of people that just stare at me. Okay, so can we do one blank stare model shot? Like no smile? No smile. All right, here we go. Beautiful. All right, close your eyes, close your eyes. And you can open them now. No smile. Close them again. Open them at me. Laughing at me. Ha <laughs> Group hug, lean in. So, yes. Wow, guys, keep laughing at me like this. <laughs> That's so good. Okay. So I had a massive blog post um, from this wedding. <laughs> I'm sure you can understand why. Just beautiful couple, beautiful place, great colors, great weather, just awesome. So anyway, um, some of the images that you are seeing me shoot, I didn't have the capacity to blog all the good ones. So You'll be able to see some of the final products when I scroll through the gallery um, at the end of this episode. You are going to just love yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes. All right, here we go. So when y'all are walking, you're just laughing at each other. You don't have to laugh at me. And you can get a little tighter in just so you're not in the bright light. I'm sorry. Actually, you want to come over here for this one? Yeah. Perfect. Bye. See ya. Bye. Okay. Can you shoot a vertical from that angle, like focusing on Amanda of this? Okay, are we ready for this, guys? Slow motion walking, don't speed walk. You can scooch over behind, yeah, there you go, perfect. Here we go, nice and slow, we're walking and laughing, here we go, walking, laughing at each other. Beautiful, gorgeous. Y'all can all go back, that was perfect, y'all all go back. That was good. That's really hard to do. Okay, so. So this is what we're going to do. It's the last one. Bride and groom are going to stay out in front a little bit. We're going to do kiss, screaming, that one. Okay, you're going to twist in towards him. So belly button to belly button. All right. Michael is going to fluff the veil. All right. You're going to put your arms around your bride. Let's make sure I can just see everybody so y'all can kind of scooch towards her over here. And you guys are actually really good right here. All right, so they are gonna share a kiss. Y'all are making a big deal about it. Like fist pump, screaming, we're excited. 
if you're the one person, normally it's a groomsman, the one groomsman that does nothing, it's just it's real. The it's the worst. So oh, even if, is yes, you can, make sure you don't, maybe down. Who's an upper? No, you can, you, well, she can be up. You can be up. Yeah. Okay. Let me back up. Let me back up. Okay. Let's see here. All right. All right, hold on. Let me see. Ty, I'll get you to back up. Michael, I'm trying to get a good visual on how many people need to adjust. I think we're okay. So let's see. Ready? Okay, I think we're good. Arms around your bride. You're going to throw it up and run away. Okay? And let's have this groomsman in a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It was great. Okay, you ready, guys? They're going to share a kiss. The veil, if, it, if it's going to be in their face, it's okay. Just a little flying would be good. Christian, if you can angle towards me a little bit. Yeah. Oh, now we're, now we're good. Here we go. They're sharing a kiss. One, two, and three. Okay. Can you do that again? That was amazing. But, hey, when you, when you dip her, just turn, out, turn her out to me a little. Yes. So, so, that her, so that her head is going back towards Michael and not towards Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Not too, too far, but you're good. Hey, guys, you can look anywhere you want. Oh, not at them. It's actually better if it's different. Me, them, it doesn't matter. Okay? Guys, we're almost done. Here we go. One, two, three. Wow. Guys, a lot of people can't do that. Not hating on anybody, but a lot of people can't do that. Okay, so the fourth trickiest part of this wedding day was family formals. And it wasn't just one thing about family formals. It was the fact that the first set of family formals were rushed and in harsh light and super hot. And then the second part of family formals were super rushed in a church. We had charter bus leaving. The charter bus was trying to leave with certain guests and people were missing and we had a certain amount of time and we had to drive 20 minutes back to the church. It was just it was just kind of a mess. And that's normal. I mean, wedding days are like that all the time. There's nothing abnormal about this wedding. But that's part of being a wedding photographer that a lot of people don't anticipate and it can catch them off guard. And actually what I've found is that in those moments where it feels like a fiasco, like it just feels like chaos, those are the moments where we make the best impact on our clients. We actually have more people talk about how we handle the stress than they do about how we are um, in the happy, easy parts of the day. So I wanna show you these few clips um, of what we experienced during this wedding day, during Family Formal, so you can see how we handle this type of stress on a wedding day. Okay, such a great example of being proactive instead of being passive. Like I could have waited in that like community center room for the planners to come and get us when they had the time to, to pull us in here, get everyone ready for family formals, or I can be the one who's saying, okay, is there a way for us to get in the sanctuary through a back way in the church? Let's figure that out. Okay, Michael, you figured that out. Okay, everybody making an announcement. Everybody who is a part of the bride and groom's family, come follow me. Um, and then getting getting the ball rolling. There's a time and place for a photographer to take charge. And if you don't take charge, then the day will take charge of you. If, if you are not the proactive one, you will get steamrolled by the events of the day and you won't be in control whatsoever. Um, I don't know what she's talking about, but she looks a little panicked. Anyway, um, so they can, maybe it's a bouquet problem. I, I don't remember what was happening, but we need to get the show on the road and we're doing it and we're doing it really well and we're efficient. Um, and we again, make up like 20 or 30 minutes in the timeline because we're being proactive. I can, I just can't emphasize this enough. Being proactive is hard because being proactive means you have to take initiative and it is so much easier and more comfortable to be passive. Yes. Come perfect. Dad, you can be right beside your wife. Perfect. You can file in. Let's see, do we have any other we have women? Brothers, brothers, brothers. brothers. Yep, yeah, brothers. Perfect. And we're going to have a few people stand up behind them, okay? So let's let a few people get up on this stairway up behind. Perfect. Wonderful. She can stand nice and close. Nice and close. Yes, that, let's not make her climb a step. Perfect. Could I have you guys stand up above and find a window in between them? Is that okay? And ma'am, you can you can stand right here. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think you'll be just fine. A chair might be good. And a 35. Okay, perfect. So you guys can find a window right here. So sir, your head could be here. Okay. 
Oh, sure. Where's your husband? Oh, well, sure. He can come back down. Perfect. Height-wise, that'd probably be good. That's okay. Perfect. As long as... Yes, thank you. Hold on, hold on. Can you hand... Thank you. Okay. Perfect. I, I'll adjust you in two seconds. Okay. I can pull it out front. Pull it out front for you. Perfect. Wonderful. Wonderful. You look great. You can hold on to his elbow. You can hold on to her elbow. Ma'am, you look great. You can get nice and close. You can hold on. That's wonderful. And sir, you can get nice and close. And ma'am, as long as I can see you, you're fine up there. But I actually think you're a little too far back. You can come to the end over here and I can fit you in. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. You can get nice and close. Oh, you're fine. You can get nice and close. And sir, you can come and fill in right here if that's possible. You can fill in here. And let's see, sir, if you want to actually come, I can fit you in on the end. Okay, perfect. All right, everybody, you look great. I'm going to stand up on a chair. This is one of our big group shots. This is the hardest part of the day. If you live through family formals, you are doing great. Okay? Yes, yes. Okay. Everyone is smiling right here at me. And, sir, your shoulder can come in a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Wonderful. And you can get a little bit closer on the end. I know. It's a little tight, but you got it. One, two, and three. Beautiful smile in here. Gorgeous, and you can relax. Okay, the next grouping is? Okay, we're going to go with the da, 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 Randy, Maria, Luke, Brett, Rodney, Terry, Trent, Ellen, Rachel, Ryan, Karen, Alec, Ian, Robert, and Joanne. This is a great example of um, why you need first names and not just like all my mom's cousins. Like ask for first names on your questionnaire um, so that you can name out first names like Michael just called out. That saves so much time. People perk up when they hear their name. They don't perk up when they when they hear someone yell, I need, I need the bride's mom's cousins. You know, that just doesn't work well. Are you with in the photo? Yes, with him. Come on up. You have a corsage. You must be very important. She is. So she is. She is. So is. You can come stand right here. <laughs> I am very aware that I just called it a crossage, not a corsage. That, my bad. Are you together? Yes. Wonderful. You can stand in front of him right here. Okay. And you all can file in really close. Perfect. I can see it in your faces. You all look similar. You can. I, perfect. This is great. Let's see. You can get nice and close. Wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, we're doing it. We're doing it. This is the big one. Okay, so this is great. Make sure I can see everybody's faces. And if I can see your eyes, it doesn't mean I can see your mouth. So make sure your mouth isn't hidden. There you go. Is that plus one? Randy. Is that plus one? Randy. Randy. Stop the bus. Stop the bus. What's that? Oh, okay. Stop the bus. Okay. Okay, so let's pull your veil over that shoulder. Phew, for a minute there, I did not know what was, what was going on. I I think I was like in the midst of like, hey, we're about to take a portrait. And then I realized there was like a, a bus um, pan panic set in. So um, anyway, we did that big group shot. I wanted to explain in between the uh, groom's family and this segment, there were eight minutes of family formals that I cut out of the um, the film. And I cut it out just because it, it's a lot. It, it made... You know, you'd end up with like five hours of things to watch and no one has time for that. So we are doing the smaller group shots with the bride. Uh, and then we transition into a bridal party shot in the church. Um, and then I take one of my favorites from the day, which I'll show you. <laughs> We're going to balance them out. Anna, yes. You both are going to go here. Yes. Wonderful. Two and two. Sure. Come on up. Come on up. Stay there. Yeah. Stay Feet can come up. They need to get on the bus. Sweet. Okay. So we're going to just do one bridal party and call it. Okay. Sweet. Okay. And we've done his immediate family. Yeah, all up there. We Perfect. did it there. Okay. So we're, we're now here. Good time. Perfect. Right. So bridal so party. So we want to do bridal party. Bridal party. You can right come here. on up. So if this was helpful, if you loved seeing real wedding day footage, real behind the scenes clips of what it looks like for us to shoot weddings, you may find it really helpful to watch this entire wedding day. Uh, and we'd love to give that to you. If you are interested in seeing all of Amanda Christian's wedding day, like from the moment we arrived at the venue to when we did the final exit shot at night, 
over four hours of behind the scenes footage. If you would love to learn from us in that capacity, you can have access to that. You can actually sign up and get access to the entire wedding day for free, all the behind the scenes footage, um, and actually a free editing demo as well. So you can not only see how I shoot behind the scenes, but how I edit the photos in their raw form um, and learn from me in that way as well. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time. This is Thanks for watching. See you on the flip flop. Gotta figure out an outro.